Ghost of Tsushima made by Sucker Punch Productions is one of those games that does not come around all that often. Which, in hindsight, might not be a bad thing. Because if it did, I don't think anyone who enjoys gaming would ever leave their house. It really is that good. So, to figure out what's made Ghost of Tsushima one of the fastest selling original IPs for this generation of consoles, let's start by jumping into the visuals. Ghost of Tsushima is easily one of the most beautiful games that's ever been made. There were several times, especially early on, I found myself shaking my head thinking there is no way this game looks this good. Clearly it did because I was staring right at it, but it was still pretty mind-blowing to realize that this entire game world was created by people. The colors, the lighting, the atmosphere, it's all incredibly well done. And I think that those three elements in particular complement each other better than they do in just about any other game out there. Even the nights in this game are absolutely stunning, and don't even get me started on the sunsets. Now, one of the coolest things here is that while Ghost of Tsushima doesn't stray too far away from the typical open world formula, it does do something very innovative in its decision to get rid of the minimap. Rather than having you focus on a waypoint or a compass like you would in most games, the wind directs you where to go, allowing you to completely immerse yourself in the world around you. Among the obvious reasons, Part of why I think this new system works so well for the game is because of how lush the environments are, and the fact that basically everything on screen moves in some way. Whether it be the tall grass, various particle effects, or even just your cape fluttering in the wind. It all helps to ensure that even when the breeze isn't all that visible, you still have a good idea of where to go. The lack of a compass is also heavily reinforced by the huge variety of different biomes. The island of Tsushima, which is massive by the way, is filled with a nearly countless number of unique environments, from golden forests and colorful fields to dark and dreary marshes. The clear contrast here makes certain that you very rarely feel lost or unfamiliar with where you are in relation to other parts of the map. Now in some games, that contrast can end up being a bit too stark, but in this game, all of the environments actually blend together quite well, and the whole island is sort of encapsulated in this very distinct Japanese style that ties it all together. You've got quaint little fishing villages on the coast, ancient temples in the mountains, and makeshift towns run by smugglers and thieves in grimy coves. And that's just barely scratching the surface. Of course, none of these things would pay off as much as they do if it weren't for the game's incredible draw distance, which really allows for you to take in the sheer scale of Tsushima Island and all of its parts. Though highly impressive on its own, it pairs extremely well with the level of verticality and the way the game utilizes sightlines to reinforce exploration. When you're down in a valley, for instance, you might see intriguing structures up on the surrounding cliffs and distant mountains. Or, when you're traveling through a dense forest, you might spot a large tower on the horizon through a break in the trees. It's all remarkably well done, no matter where you are in the world. Another plus here is Ghost of Tsushima's level of customization. You can unlock new armors, hats and headbands, different swords and scabbards, and even some pretty cool samurai masks and helmets, including some that are a bit more outlandish, which is always fun to see. I also thought it was neat that each armor's attributes are sort of tailored to complement a specific playstyle, like exploration or stealth. And although there's not a tremendous amount of armors in relation to the other stuff, the ones they do have each come with three different looks that you can unlock by upgrading them. And what's cool is that you can always switch back to one of the previous versions without degrading the stats if you prefer that style to one of the newer looks. In general, there's just a ton of different ways that you can outfit your character whether you want to go for that traditional samurai or more of an unconventional looking ronin. And last, but certainly not least, you gotta love some of the options this game includes when it comes to the aesthetics, such as the ability to play in black and white as if it were an old samurai film. Overall, fantastic work when it comes to the visuals. And with that said, let's talk a bit about the gameplay.
So talk about blowing it out of the water when it comes to swordplay. Ghost of Tsushima, without a doubt, has one of the most enjoyable combat systems on the market. Obviously, there are some other fun ones out there like Witcher 3 with its signs, or Jedi Fallen Order with its force abilities, but if we're just talking straight up swordplay, I honestly believe this one is pretty close to being at the top. There's a flow to it that I simply haven't felt in many other games before, aside from maybe the new God of War. And while Ghost of Tsushima may not have the myriad of magical abilities that are featured in those aforementioned titles, it does have a number of its own unique things going for it. The standoffs, for instance, which are completely optional if you prefer to play stealthy, add this honorable sort of way to enter a fight, which fits perfectly with the game's setting and its focus on samurai tradition. And then there are the isolated duels, which act as the game's boss fights, but they're done in a way that's far more cinematic than what you'd experience in most titles. Almost every single one of these takes place in a heavily stylized arena that sets it apart from all the others, be it inside of a dark grove illuminated by fireflies, or a misty pool beneath a waterfall. The theatrics of it all really elevate the experience to a whole new level, and create what feels like a duel of fates between two swordsmen every time you encounter one of these events. The combat, though not as difficult as something like Sekiro, can be fairly unforgiving if you're someone who just wants to attack with reckless abandon. However, it can also be extremely satisfying if you actually take the time to learn your enemy's attack patterns and utilize all the different tools and abilities. Honestly, the only real knock that I have on it is the stance system. Each enemy type in the game has a specific stance that you're encouraged to use in order to best get past their guard. While this was a decent idea in theory, what it ends up doing is breaking up the free-flowing nature of the game's combat. Not a ton, but that brief pause in the action is just enough to be annoying, especially when you're dealing with multiple different enemy types at once. Of course, if honor isn't your thing, you can always go in quiet and try to take your adversaries out from the shadows. Thanks to a plethora of ghost weapons, which include everything from throwing knives to a blowgun, Stealth in Ghost of Tsushima is actually pretty fun, and there's a wealth of different abilities you can use that allow you to do things like deflect arrows, or assassinate up to three different enemies at once. It's all very cool, and pretty much allows you to tackle the game however you see fit. I think its main problem is the same one that a lot of games face, which is that while the enemy AI isn't all that bad, it's also very gamey in the sense that you can take out a few people, raise the alarm, hide for a bit, and then return as if nothing ever happened. It would be nice if things were a little more difficult. On a similar note, I feel like climbing also could have been a bit more involved. Though it works okay for things like stealth and exploration, it isn't until you unlock the grappling hook that it requires any sort of real skill. And even then, it isn't all that much. The one thing that saves this, however, is the game's phenomenal level design. We touched a bit on this earlier with the level of verticality, but even on a much smaller scale, the locations surrounding each objective or point of interest feel like they were thoughtfully crafted with the main goal of making movement around the game world feel enjoyable, even if it doesn't require all that much skill. Take one of the tailing missions for instance. These are usually done horribly in games, and tend to feel like someone just plopped them down in a random part of the map without any further thought. In Ghost of Tsushima, however, every single one of these feels like the space around the mission was carefully created in a way that would give the player an interesting way to stay out of sight, be it on foot or hanging off the side of a cliff. Some great work here all across the board. With the gameplay covered though, let's move on to sound. Jin, what happened? I found Lord Shimra. I could have saved him, but the Khan was there. I failed my uncle. At least you're in one piece. I swore to protect this island with my life, but 
now the Mongols have stolen our home, killed our samurai. You forgot what it's like to fight someone stronger than you. To feel weak. Sometimes when you're staring death in the face, you have to do whatever it takes to survive. And we'll go ahead and start with the music, which is absolutely fantastic. In fact, damn near perfect in its ability to fit with the game's setting and tone. Each track is made up of a cavalcade of instruments that give a real weight to the music and this feeling of density. The more energetic themes are comprised of woodwinds and big kettle drums, as well as what sounds like a variety of traditional Japanese string instruments, allowing the music to feel more mysterious, wild, and free. Which fits extremely well with this game's emphasis on breaking away from tradition. Then you have the more heroic and emotional tracks, which work superbly for some of the game's bigger battles and powerful moments throughout the story. These tend to keep those drums and woodwinds, but end up switching it up a bit when it comes to the strings, opting to include a much greater number of violins and cellos, giving the tracks more of that orchestral feel. The sound of the environment also plays a huge role in making this game's soundscape what it is. For instance, the ferocity of one of the game's lightning storms can easily take the intensity of combat to new extremes. While at the same time, something as simple as a soft wind blowing through the trees can just as easily give you that brief sense of tranquility, despite being surrounded by this inescapable notion of death and despair that's taken over the war-torn island of Tsushima. It just feels like there are so many layers to it, all the way down to the smallest details. Every little bit, no matter how small, really comes together to help make this feel like a living, breathing world. Voice acting is also very well done, particularly when it comes to the main cast, whose voices fit their characters damn near flawlessly. From the astute Sensei Ishikawa, all the way to the irresponsible and drunken Kenji. I love the kid, but this is too dangerous. It will never work. We'll make it work. This the samurai? You can call me Lord Sakai. <gasps> Forgive me, my lord. Every one of these characters sounds noticeably unique from one another. Which is great because story-wise, they all have their own morals and ways that they've dealt with what's going on in the world. Always nice to see that reflected in the voice work. And as a final point, the sound of combat in this game is impressively gritty. I honestly don't think I've ever heard it done better. Especially when it comes to the swords, which actually feel sharp thanks to realistic tings and grating noises as they clash together or bounce off each other. And there's this meatiness to it that's felt as you cut through enemies, giving the combat this real sense of vulnerability that isn't usually realized in most titles. Taking everything into account, this is easily some of the best sound design in gaming. With that said, and without mentioning any spoilers, let's move on to the story. What does honor mean to you? I guess... protecting people. The ones who can't fight for themselves. You have a good heart. But first, we must show everyone that we serve our Lord with courage, integrity, and self-control. You say that like it's easy. It's never easy, Jin. I struggle with it every day. But we must set an example for our people by remaining true to our code and to ourselves. That is the meaning of honor. Ah, not her samurai! In terms of story, Ghost of Tsushima does a fantastic job of tossing you right into the action. As Jin Sakai, a samurai warrior and one of the last remaining members of his clan, you'll fight to protect your people from Kotun Khan and his mongrel invaders. In order to do so, however, you'll have to set aside your honor as a samurai and walk the path of the ghost, waging war in unconventional ways in order to reclaim Tsushima from your enemies. And I loved how they handled that conflict within the story honoring tradition versus doing what needs to be done in order to survive. It's something that you see Jin struggle with as a character throughout this entire experience, as old friends and unlikely allies pull him in different directions. 
And by placing you right into the thick of things, Ghost of Tsushima gets you to care about its world and its characters surprisingly fast. There are times when the story even manages to reach the emotional heights of games like Red Dead Redemption 2. Seriously, a couple moments nearly brought a tear to my eye. And many others did an impeccable job at getting me to completely hate the game's main antagonist. Because of his actions, you'll want nothing more than to finish him off. And yet, at the same time, you can sort of understand where he's coming from, and why he does the things he does. Kotan, cousin of Kublai, grandson of Genghis. Brother, you are a warrior. I can see that. You trained your whole life for this, and you have won battles. The lesser men have called unwinnable, yes? But while you were sharpening your sword, do you know how I prepared for today? I learned. I know your language, your traditions, your beliefs, which villages to tame and which to burn. So I'll ask you once again, Samurai. Do you surrender? Khan is not just this mindless villain. He's very clever and knows how to use the Samurai's noble ways against them. And I think that works great with the tone that Ghost of Tsushima strives for narratively. Because things in this game are not black and white. It's a very grim world, and very rarely do you encounter what could be considered a happy ending. Best of all, every story beat here feels earned. Things like character deaths and betrayals aren't just subversions of your expectations thrown in by the writers, but rather strong payoffs that were set up through intelligent foreshadowing and character development. And there is a bunch of awesome lore and mythology surrounding the history of the island and its clans, which explores everything from past rebellions to urban legends who have long since died. It's a world that feels so rich and full of history, and one of the coolest things about it is that you get to add to that history. As you progress through the story, you yourself become one of those legends. Eventually you'll start to hear whispers from random NPCs about some of your deeds, which really helps make it feel like what you do actually matters and has an impact on the world around you. Quests in general are also very well done, even the side missions which I found myself sometimes enjoying as much as the main story. And that's because very rarely does anything here feel like filler. While most missions do typically boil down to you putting your sword to use, all the different storylines surrounding that action are genuinely interesting and feature a ton of variety. From quests that are actually kinda creepy, to others that contain some good humor or heartfelt moments. There's even a small bit of choice here when it comes to little dialogue options and the naming of your horse. All in all, just a superb job from the world building to the characters to everything in between. And with that said, it's time to give this game a final rating. Like a lot of you out there, when I first saw the trailers for Ghost of Tsushima, I thought, hmm, that looks pretty cool, I think I'll have to try that out. I wasn't blown away or anything like that, but I was hopeful. Then the release date snuck up on me and I finally got my hands on it, and now that I've beat it, I don't know how I wasn't more excited for this. It really is that good, and definitely surpassed any expectations that I had for it. Is it perfect or one of the best games ever made? No but it is without a doubt one of the best games we've seen during this generation of consoles, leaving Ghost of Tsushima at a 9 out of 10 for me. Not only did I really enjoy this, but it left me feeling as though this is what other open world games like Assassin's Creed could be if they continued to innovate and push the genre forward. If you're a fan of these types of games or samurai in general, do yourself a favor and pick this one up. You will not be disappointed. But anyways guys, that's going to do it for this review, so thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you in the next one.